A new poll shows Mike Espy down just one point in the Senate race against Senator Cindy Hyde Smith. A race largely ignored nationally could be a microcosm of how close things could become election day. The new poll from the Tyson Group is giving the SB campaign a lot to be happy about. It's a serious race. I'm a serious candidate with serious issues, and the primary issue is health care. And that's why we've gotten this $700,000, because most people believe that the ACA is in peril. They believe that pre-existing illness, the coverage for that, it's in peril. But the SP campaign has called out the National Democratic Party for not investing in this okay. race. He says you with proper investment, the money would go towards if getting people to the polls via grassroots organization. <laughs> Senator Cindy Hyde Smith has made few public appearances on the campaign trail. Now, the same pollster showed back in March Mike Espy down big to Senator Cindy Hyde Smith. Those numbers there 54% to 28%. And in August, the Mike Espy campaign released another survey. Survey that showed him down just five percentage points. Now, if these numbers stick come November, this could be the closest center race Mississippi has had in quite some time. So this race is still a long shot, but it's not as much of a long shot as the Democratic Party and the National Party, their complete lack of interest in this race indicates. What it does indicate is systemic problems within the Democratic Party. They love to say that they want minority candidates to run and use their faces, as long as those faces and those people that they're using don't challenge corporate power. But then when it comes to a race in Mississippi, they don't want to contribute their financial resources there. They completely ignore Southern red states. This is a problem that Bernie Sanders pointed out. They ignore the states and then wonder why they're deep red because they don't commit any resources there. Amy McGrath in Kentucky, who's definitely going to lose to Mitch McConnell, like full stop. She's such a weak candidate and she's down in the polls. I have, I will bet so much money on her losing in the fall. I see so much focus on that race. Nothing, nothing on SB in, in, in Mississippi. Absolutely nothing. A black man, and they say they care about representation there. And I do care about representation there. I care about flipping the Senate. And I think that the National Party should be focusing more attention on races that are winnable like this one. So uh, I, I'm, I'm floored that this hasn't received more national attention. And it really does speak to the strength of his candidacy and how he's appealing to certain people um, in Mississippi, specifically black voters, in a really interesting way that should be capitalized on with financial resources from the National Party. In an election year convulsing with racial reckonings, you'd think a Senate rematch between an African-American man and a white woman would generate interest. But the contest between Democrat Mike Espy and Republican Cindy Hyde-Smith in Mississippi barely registers outside the Deep South, despite recent polling showing Espy within five percentage points of Hyde-Smith. SB, the first African-American from Mississippi to serve in Congress since Reconstruction, argues that the National Democratic Party's lack of interest in his campaign is symptomatic of a, of a deeper failure to understand how Mississippi's shifting demographics give him a legitimate shot at a red state Senate seat. The DNC says they want minorities to run for office, but when they actually do, we don't get the support that we need and deserve, SB tells the American Prospect. Where else in America is there an African-American population of 40%? Where is it? In 2018, Senator Thad Cochran resigned due to illness, setting up the contest between SB, a Madison County attorney, but also a former member of Congress from 1987 to 1993, and Bill Clinton's first Secretary of Agriculture and Hyde Smith, a state commissioner of agriculture and commerce. Bolstered by a President Trump rally, Hyde Smith won a runoff election 53.6% to SB's 46.4%. SB outraised Hyde Smith in 2018, but in 2020, he is behind $1.3 million to her $2 million. That's very small for a Senate race. Today, with SB close on her heels, some Mississippi Democrats still consider Hyde Smith to be a weak, gaff-prone candidate in a state trying to shed its image of racial hostility and dubious about the Trump administration's response to COVID-19. So far, she has kept the lowest of low profiles and has shunned debates. Her silence stands out in a tumultuous summer when state lawmakers finally voted after decades of fierce resistance to get rid of their Confederate state flag during the George Floyd protests. Despite Espy's close finish in 2018, the best showing for a Democratic Senate con contender since 1982, and current polling, party officials are fixated on other contests, be they incumbents, 
who need help, like Senator Doug Jones in Alabama, which that's gone, I think, or possible Democratic pickups in more competitive states like House Speaker Sarah Gideon in Maine or former astronaut Mark Kelly in Arizona. For SB to prevail, he has to gin up historic enthusiasm, beginning with his African-American base. He received 96% of the black vote in 2018 and then some. In 2020, that translates into generating record turnout from black voters and increasing his 2018 vote share from about 18% of the white vote in 2018 to 22% this year. It's not probable, but it's doable. And it is shameful that the Democratic National Committee has not focused more on this race. Same old, same old under Tom Perez. Debbie Wasserman Schultz out, Tom Perez in. We have Joe Biden as the nominee. We have progressives getting kicked in the teeth. And we have candidates in winnable races in the South, Black candidates, who the party is just not paying attention to because they've decided to commit their resources to other areas. It's embarrassing. And the Republican National Committee does not behave in this way. And there's a reason that they're ruthless and they're strategic. And the Democrats always seem lost because they are.